Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about some cozy fantasy books. So I found that this cozy fantasy trend is new and upcoming and I'm very excited about it. And the four books I'm going to be talking about today are different flavors of cozy fantasy. I don't think there is like a distinct definition of what means cozy fantasy, but I'm including a historical fantasy romance, um, a slice of life fantasy, and a fairy tale esque adventure. And if any of these sound interesting to you, keep on watching. First up, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This one is a really nice combination of scholarly research, light romance, and we have an odd pair of characters together. And this is a adult fantasy, so there are some graphic moments, so keep that in mind, like violent moments. We're following Emily Wilde, who is a Cambridge professor, and she is currently on a research expedition in search of an elusive type of fae at a remote northern village in Norway. One thing as a scholar is that Emily, she doesn't really like to socialize with others, and that does bring some difficulty when she is trying to get some stories out of the local people. But then her academic rival, Wendell Bambley, shows up and he's really charming and this just annoys Emily to no end. But there is more to Wendell and Emily doesn't really care as long as her research is not interrupted. First off, the characters are wonderful to read about. Emily, she's very driven for knowledge and seeking answers to learn about the Fae and their mysteries. However, Emily does have a caring side to her, which is very nice to read about, but it does put her in some sticky situations that she may need some help to get out of. Then we have Wendell who is also carrying a secret, and this secret is revealed through very satisfying ways through the unique format of this book, which are written in academic-focused journal entries written by Emily for her encyclopedia. Although this format can get a little bit dry at times, I do think it does add a personal twist to it once we get more into the dangers of fae research. My favorite part about the characters were their dynamics with each other between Emily and Wendell because they do have the academic rivalry going on but then it also results in a unique partnership that develops throughout the book. Overall, this book is quite cozy with its setting in a wintry village and as well as all the fairy adventures we are going on. Next up is what I would expect when I hear cozy fantasy and this is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This one is what I would consider a slice of life book which is like a realistic description of everyday life and we're following fantastical creatures throughout their day-to-day -day lives and it's very interesting to see that. We don't really see slice of life books so much in epic fantasy. With this one, we're following a retired work mercenary and she is opening up a new cafe in a city that she's not really familiar with, but she is ready to settle down and put down some roots. I loved reading about Viv, how she explores the city trying to find the best location for the cafe. She's constructing the cafe herself and experimenting of what works and what doesn't work with uh, feedback from customers so it's very like step by step and I really liked that simplicity of the story format. Along the way Viv also meets some other creatures who helps her with her new small business and who also eventually become her found family. There are also potential threats past and present against the cafe and Viv and it brings a belt of tension to the story and it's really interesting to see how Viv handles all of that and there's also a sprinkle of a cute romance. Overall, I think we're severely lacking in this type of cozy fantasy and I just want to read more about the daily lives of fantastic creatures in their worlds. And then we have an endearing historical fantasy romance with fairies, balls, and a curse and I'm talking about Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This book I had an absolute blast reading. We're following 20 year old Theodora and she is helping her cousin Vanessa to debut in London. The unique thing about Dora is that she has been cursed by a fairy since she was a child and that leaves her with mismatched eyes and unable to feel normal emotions. This leaves Dora to learn how to act properly in social situations but people still talk negatively about her. 
Then we have the entrance of the magician, Lord Elias Wilder, and he is quite curious about Dora and he eventually does pull her in into some fairy politics and affairs. Theodora, our main character, she does have some difficulty in feeling emotion, but that does not take away from Dora showing compassion for others and being very insightful to people's emotions. And I felt like the author did a wonderful job at describing raw and true emotions. And it really speaks on how Dora may not be able to feel emotion, but she is still showing so much more compassion and emotion than others that are normal. I also really liked the relationship between Theodora and her cousin Vanessa. It was a nice addition to the romance aspect in this book. Speaking about the love interest, Elias, he is described as being rude and threatening and he also despises the prim and properness of high society in London. However, for Dora, she remains unaffected by Elias's rude behavior and this catches him off guard and I love how Dora manages to sneak her way in into his heart. This book also explores class differences and it absolutely fed my addiction for Bridgerton S books and it really is a combination of Bridgerton and Howl's Moving Castle. And if you really like those two things, I highly recommend Half Her Soul. Last but not least, we have Trust at the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This one does come off as more of a fairy tale adventure with whimsical writing and it is set on a different planet than Earth. One thing I absolutely loved about this book was the pretty illustrations throughout and I do think that Tress would be good for YA or adult readers. Tress lives on an island in the middle of a spore-filled ocean and spores are unique to this planet and the thing about spores is once they come into contact with water, they are highly dangerous. Tress lives a simple life collecting teacups and one day she eventually does fall for the Duke's son, Charlie. Seemingly the next day, Charlie and his family are set to move off island and they keep in contact through letters, but once the letters stop, Tress realizes that Charlie is in some danger and she goes on a huge adventure to go rescue him. It was a pleasant surprise to find out that the narrator of this book is Horrid, and if you're not familiar with Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere universe of his books, um, Hoyd is a character that is in several books. I really didn't like how Hoyd told Tress's story in his unique way and Tress, she does go on a wild seafaring adventure and she meets a whole bunch of different types of characters and they do eventually become a fun family for her. Tress is really that stand-up character and this really is her coming of age story and she does tackle any challenge head-on despite any fears or risk to herself. I really liked seeing how she found her own independence throughout this adventure she's on. Overall, I really did like the whimsical feel that this book brought and if you are new to Brandon Sanderson or to the Cosmere, I would highly recommend you to pick up Tress of the Emerald Sea because it's a very endearing tale and I really had a blast reading it. And those were all the four cozy fantasy books I wanted to share with you all today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you can give me a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!